Hello and let's talk about the number 36. Yes, 36 runs which was India's score in the second innings in the Adelaide Test and which has sent shockwaves to the Indian cricket fan community. Forget words, not even memes might be enough to adequately represent the kind of feeling that Indian fans and for that matter cricket fans across the world felt as the famed Indian batting lineup crumbled before Australia. So it's important to take the score in perspective of course. India was in fact performing decently in the first part of the test but then this collapse has actually cast a grave question mark on the performance of the Indian batting order, the nature of the Indian team itself, issues of selection, issues of temperament, issues of technique. All these now are very big questions that the Indian team, the Indian management and the BCCI cannot ignore. And to talk more about this, we have Leslie Xavier, a NewsClick sports journalist. And Leslie talks not only about the past, previous incidents of such sort, the kind what happened after that, but also the very attitude, the kind of hype around the Indian team and what it conceals and what it reveals. Here's what he had to say. Thank you, Leslie, for joining us. So cricket fans across India, in fact, uh, in many parts of the world, uh, are in a state of shock even now. And uh, it seems uh, it seems unreal. Something that is from you know it's it's the stuff of stories from decades ago or whatever when India was a very weak team, did not have the resources, was a minor player in world cricket at that time. You could have thought of something like this, but at this point, it just seems unbelievable. So, quick thoughts on the situation right now. So yeah, thirty six is a. I mean, yeah, by any stretch of the imagination, it's it's <laughs> it's bad. And uh, so previous, if you look at the top five lowest scores, the previous one was in 1974, uh, 42 against England, a uh, disastrous tour. And then uh, there is one in between in the top five, look at it, in the 90s. Otherwise, everything belongs to the era where Indian... Uh, cricket team was I mean, nowhere in the top, uh, even politically or in the game. I say politically because Indians are the, India is the top dog in on both, both counts right now. Uh, so uh, earlier, yeah, these scores were, used to be common when our team, I'm talking about pre-independence and immediately post-independence teams used to tour England or West Indies or Australia. And uh, now it, it's surprising because see the kind of uh, cricketers that we have and India in the last three decades, four decades, I mean, also post the World Cup victory in 1983, we have slowly established ourselves as, as one of the strongest batting nations in the world. And so we have had very poor bowling performances where batsmen have rip, ripped us apart in this, in this I mean, even, even, in, even in this current decade. Uh, first part of the current decade. But batting is what not, uh, raises that red flag. When batting collapse happens, because India is, I mean, we have, our stars are always batsmen, if you look at it. And and this team also has a decent lineup of batsmen who have established their credentials in all formats. Uh, you have a very specialized test batsman in Cheteshwar Pujara. Uh, Great batsman, I mean, no doubt, but he failed in the second innings as well in Adelaide. And uh, in fact, all the batsmen, uh, they didn't cross uh, into double digits, right? So that way, the previous batch score of 42, previous record, that way, uh, at least one player had crossed. And I think he scored Eknath Solkar, it was he scored 18, I think, but I, in this, in this uh, team, Nobody did. Uh, I, I, I have to <laughs> decipher the, this thing whether the extras happen to be the top scorer. So, anyways, uh, jokes apart. Uh, looking at the team composition, of course, this team has very good bowlers, fast bowlers, decent batsmen. I mean, decent uh, best batsmen in the world. Uh, credential wise, they shouldn't fail, and it it, it so happened that. The Australian fast bowlers rip, rip through them in that in that critical uh, that 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 uh, part of the uh, portion of the game. It just happened. It was a blitzkrieg kind of a situation, 
and australia themselves did not play well in the test match until that moment so australian batsmen had struggled in the first week in fact in fact they conceded first innings lead as well right so uh, it was it was supposed to be an evenly poised match till this happened so it's it's very clear why it happened though because in all the reactions where people have gotten into uh pin pointing faults in virat kohli and his aggressiveness his brashness among other things it takes away what the, a very important aspect which is which is not being discussed this india indians are a you know as far as pink ball test is concerned they have just only played one pink ball test day and night test before this uh day and night test is new in the game in any case so it started in 2015 and the the unbeaten team in this is australia they have won all the matches they have played i believe eight and they got into the bandwagon right bandwagon right at the start because they believed in its potential they thought that australian grounds are huge test following is there but still they were dwindling crowd etc the cricket australia was worried about how to bring uh, the crowd back to test matches and they thought that uh, day and night cricket I mean, whether they are right or right or wrong, it's a matter of debate again. Let's uh, I mean, let's see how how the game progresses in the next ten years or so. But they got into the bandwagon and they have ensured that each home series or even away series, at least one match is there, which is day and night test. And so that experience of seven, eight matches, that 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 is very big. While India was always reluctant to get into it, except I would say. Uh, again last year when bangladesh against bangladesh when they played i would say that was a gimmick itself because when saurav ganguly became the uh, bcci president he had to make some some kind of flashy move and this was a flashy move like we are getting into the nit test so it was organized in calcutta uh, his hometown ganguly's hometown and uh, against bangladesh see again bangladesh is also new to pink ball test and so Uh, and it's, I mean, technically a weaker side as well, and they're playing away to India. So uh, India won that match, but that doesn't make them make them experts in pink ball cricket. And pink ball behaves distinctly, especially certain phases of the match when it moves prodigiously. Certain phases of the of the of the match, uh, especially when in that twilight area when when the sun is fading and the lights come on, it behaves as though Uh, uh, they are playing in overcast condition as though as though they are playing in england right. so that i mean so you are talking about our batsmen who are used to flat deck pitches playing on the ice they anyways get get in trouble with the slightest of movement and then you are not used to playing pink ball cricket and then you go to australia and you play some of the best uh, fast bowlers swing bowlers in the world and this is what happens so under prepared they went into went into the match uh, clearly under prepared and at the same time uh, the batsmen when collapse was happening rather than shoring it up i don't know i mean maybe they they, they just maybe they they're not equipped well enough to play test match anymore because the focus so much of focus on the shorter format it's 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 very right. difficult uh, to refocus and understand the dynamic of a longer form game and that to a dynamic of a game which is alien in itself because because it's a day and night test match absolutely a- so let's see when i saw the score line i was reminded of the infamous brazil germany match actually where uh, brazil let in seven goals and even at that time it was another example of a team which was hyped so much there was a lot of talk about it it was touted as you know one of the best in the world and then this defeat happened and a lot of the structural issues came out and you also explained some of the structural issues that you know the glamour and glitz around the indian team basically have actually concealed some of these some of these issues and simultaneously there is also the question of by now so much of discussion about the team has become about the attitude about you know the hype around the team rather than actually the technical aspects or uh, say the perform i mean the technical performance of the team itself so that's actually a uh, interesting point as well yeah it is because the main narrative of team india if you look at it it's 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 this uh, uh, virat kohli this this yeah 
so uh, the hyper alpha right. mode zero or main right right but right, right. Uh, see it it works i mean i'm sure on the sporting field it works but on a cricket that's not the only thing that works that that's what that's what we are missing here so on a cricket field and i mean across all the formats but especially on the test uh, the many layers that 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 sport uh, requires you to uh, as a player is 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 needed fully in in the shorter formats maybe aggression because it's it's such a short format that maybe aggression and a bit of flash and all these things work and then you get away with it but on the longer format it brings out brings out your personality even that's that's how that's how they talk about test cricket so you need temperament you need uh, technique you need the right strategy right uh, approach in each session so i earlier mentioned how the pink ball behave differently in certain times of the day that requires a different set mindset when you are batting there so you might have been a set batsman till 5 o'clock in the evening suddenly the lights come out and then it's the next session and you have to start afresh you have to approach the game differently so all these things matter and so it's not like you come out and ah, we'll take out the aussies the way they deserve i mean the way they play they play aggressive we'll also play aggressive it doesn't work like that so uh, that's one introspection prop i mean see these things i mean similar result, uh, results have happened similar losses have happened like the last test series india played abroad was against new zealand you they lost their they have lost they have had bad losses in england prior to that in 2018 and in between earlier you mentioned the glossing over part of it it's not just the glamour that is being used but it's also the record that's been used to gloss over things and record of being playing at home which is like i said earlier placid pitches so you have your own crowd support happening around and weather conditions suit you a lot of factors are there that place place for you and also uh, you i mean you go and bolster your record playing many series in sri lanka which i mean <laughs> so the idea of virat kohli as a leader it's been set i mean when he took over from ms dhoni and but then uh, always being on the aggressive so i I'm, i'm sure i mean uh, of course in the dressing room what happened we are not we can never be very sure but inside the dressing room there have been there would have been a aggressive tense atmosphere when the wicket started falling falling and when a new batsman is going to go in that doesn't help So this I this I have I've been always critical about Virat Kohli's ca- captaincy. It's on the playing field when things are going and when wickets are falling or you are on the field or when you are batting well, it works fine. But when when things are not happening, the team needs a impassive captain who doesn't betray his emotions, who uh, emotions who doesn't shout, who doesn't droop. I mean Virat Kohli is very expressive that way, and that always never. I mean that doesn't. work at all and it has been proven and of all things in the IPL because he has a great team if you look at the players in Royal Challengers Bangalore but they are always underperform I wonder why so that's the question that uh, team india management and the bcci should ask now with this loss because uh, when we look at the previous worst score the 42 in 1974 uh, Ajit Vadeka was the skipper he came back he he lost his position even in the west zone team he never played for india after that and uh, now uh, uh, now patodi he became the captain after they took right. over the captain so whatever the internal dynamics was there but action was taken so whether such kind of a postmortem and strict action will be taken i mean that's that's up to bcci uh, already there have been some calls happening that rahul dravid who has been working with under 19 players quite a bit now and he has proven his uh, I mean, coaching credentials also decently and some of the youngsters in this current team have been coached by him so there have been calls i think rahul dravid should be there in australia at this point since virat kohli is traveling back for paternity leave and then maybe that might lead into at some later stage a change of era as far as course is concerned maybe dravid taking over but maybe because with bcc and with kohli and devish shastri having a dynamic a strange dynamic that too 
it's 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 uncertain absolutely and just to sort of uh, the bcci of course having its own dynamics as well like you said which makes uh, the question of whether they're going to intervene even more dicey because i they are, i i don't think i mean i wonder if the bcci has ever been full, full of drama as it is right now it's become and say well, like you you mentioned the previous instance when one acre what acre was involved at that time I think the BCCI was a far more unobtrusive organization, despite whatever it did. Whereas now, in its own right, it's a media star or a sensation, so to speak. The seventy-four the cases. I mean, it's not very clear cut that way that the board was very, very, very clear as far as clarity of action is concerned. So there was a lot of politics within the team, and uh, uh, so people were waiting for you to fail so that other others can take over just that if you look at the history of indian cricket i mean that era it it was it was i mean almost all the eras you have had problems between gavaskar and uh, kapil dev kapil dev and azharuddin so it's it's always been there so that way uh, uh, i hyper alpha male leading the team and no questions asked so that that way at least it there is a semblance of control and th this kind of a system started probably with the current bcci president being at the helm as as captain of india because he, he was such unquestioned leader on in a team where you had such intent you had uh, various other stars dravid sevag later vvs lakshman so uh, you were asking so uh, it was a team full of stars compared to even now that way but with with such a system the problem is that there's no second line of command now virat kohli is leaving people are panicking they're saying dravid uh, i mean and with this loss send dravid back uh, send dravid to australia to help these guys things like that have been discussed rohit sharma is a is a decent captain but he is not a test player is i mean he's recently joined the test squad but he has not considered a test player as such but and also uh his co uh, leadership credentials have been proven in the ipl and in limited overs cricket so you can never be sure so uh so bcci has to act if they have to act in in multiple ways firstly to look at the future of what who would be the leader after kohli or if at all kohli remain retains his captaincy now which is uh, which way is fine but Kohli can't be captain forever, right? Also, right? And then with this kind of leadership that has been, it's like certain political party. It's like Congress even. So there is no second line of leaders to, uh, I mean, take over the mantle and take the fight to the BJP as far as electoral politics in the concern is concerned. Yeah, New India is being reflected in cricket. Kohli is perhaps right. So BCCI's action also, they, I mean, I don't know whether their priority, whether they have their eyes in australia at the moment because within the bcci politics there is there is a, a, a critical juncture happening because uh, jay shah the secretary and bcci president ganguly they they are very keen to stay on and their mandate and tenure was supposed to end in july pandemic situation so things uh, lingered on but now they have approached the supreme court and i have requested the court to take a decision on uh, revoking certain clauses in the in the constitution which which was put in place after the loza panel reform so uh, the main point being uh, the cooling off period that the officials are supposed to uh, go through after continuing as uh, in a in a position for 6 years in, not in a position in many positions basically if you have had a tenure in the state association and then the bcci on a continuous six year period then you have to get yourself off any power and then after three years come back again so ganguly was the uh, head of cab cricket association of bengal and jaysha was head of uh, the gujarat state association so both of them have, have, have are supposed to go into a cooling off period but they don't want to and they are trying to get this done so Ganguly is busy in doing that. So whether he will be interested in the Indian cricket team, whether he'll be whether uh, BCCI is churning would affect the restart of the domestic 
calendar which is not happened since since lockdown and uh, so uncertain more than 5000 6000 cricketers across various levels women men boys uh, age group cricketers everyone is facing an uncertain time because uh, there is no sign that the domestic cricket is starting so uh, on one side it's the national team and the international cricket you are talking about and how bcci should intervene now to understand where the team is heading and on the other hand they have a larger responsibility of ensuring that uh, the cricket uh, from the grassroots level to rng level he starts and that supply chain of players that at least was in place despite all the churnings and voltics that happened in the bcci uh, that's also in jeopardy uh, as of now and uh, so uh, action yeah let's wait and see in the coming days after the tour because the bcci and and it makes sense as well uh, that there shouldn't be a knee jerk action now right, right. but the, let the tour end and then let the team team come back and there should be a post mortem but beyond that if if at all solid action would be taken that's that remains to be seen absolutely thank you so much lazy for speaking to us that's all we have time for today we'll be back tomorrow with more news from india and the world until then keep watching news click